Hello and welcome to Euchromedia.com. My name is Sergey Proknevsky and today I'm going to show you 17 useful tricks in After Effects that you may not know about. Number one is new project template. And so for this example, I'm going to open up a new uh, project, Control-Alt-N. We'll do that. And so right away you can see by default, this is what After Effects gives us, all these settings and stuff, and it's pretty plain. But you can actually set up your own template project. So each time you create a new project, you can have your own structure. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. I already have something set up here. I'm going to use this project. And as you can see, I just have all the folders, subfolders. I brought in all the footage. Let's say, what if that's how I wanted to start every new project? And I also altered some project settings in here as well. So once you set up how you want things to be, next what you need to do is just save it. Control Shift S, save as. And then, you know, obviously guide it to where you want to save it. And then uh, where it says save as type, make sure you go to Adobe After Effects template project. And then I already have one here created. So I'm just going to select that and overwrite that. Yes. And so there's one more step you need to do because right now if you do Control Alt N new project, you can see that it goes back to the default. So you have to set it up basically one more step you have to do. So I'm going to go to Edit, Preferences, and inside this uh, new project, I'm going to click on that. All you have to do is just select this checkbox here and then load your project template, the one you just exported. Select that, hit Open, and hit OK. And so now when you do Control Alt N, and you can see that the new project is set up exactly how you want it to be. Number two is freeze on last frame. And so for this, I'm going to use this animation I did years ago. And so as you can see, uh, when I get to the end of this animation, it stops and we have all this blank space. But what if I wanted to extend this uh, animation all the way to the end of my timeline here? Uh, how can I do this? So one way you can do it is just uh, select you know, your clip and then do Control alt T to enable the time remap and then you can just you know grab the last of it here and then extend it and that's one way to do it but there's actually a new way uh, all you have to do is just select your clip and right click on it and go to time and then freeze on last frame and as you can see it takes the last frame and it extends it all the way to the end of your timeline number three is time stretching and so for this I'm gonna reuse the same footage again and you know in After Effects to stretch your footage a lot of times what you'll end up using uh, is you know time remap and to enable that, you would just hit Control alt t and then you'll get the in keyframe and out keyframe. And if you wanted to shorten that and speed it up, you would just bring these two keyframes closer together, and then you would get that that way. But there's also another way. And, you know, a lot of people don't know about this next step because uh, it's kind of hidden. And let me show you. Right here, icon here, if you just click on that, you'll expand this new panel. And uh, inside here, you'll see duration and stretch. You know, you can basically speed it up based on time or percentage. So you can speed up, you know, like 50% or so. And, or you can do by time. So that's kind of cool. You can see that it's stretching based on the endpoint. You know, if you click on it, you can do it from the current frame. You know, if you stretch it, you can see this doing from the current frame. Or you can, uh, you know, click on it again and then do layer out point. So basically on the out point. And so, yeah, that's cool. But there's actually more to it and uh, that I find very useful. So I'm going to undo all this stuff. So what if I wanted to take this endpoint from this footage and place it right where my time indicator is at? And in other words, it will speed everything up because the out point wouldn't move. How would I do that? Is there a shortcut for it? And the answer is yes. If you hit Control Shift and then Comma, you will see that the endpoint will snap right where your time indicator is at. Therefore, it made it uh, now at 82% instead of 100. So you can see it's a lot faster now. And the same thing for the out point. There's actually a shortcut for that. Instead of Control Shift comma, it's Control Alt comma. And so now you can see that it's shortened my footage. Number four is auto trace. And so for this example, I have this JPEG in here, and uh, you know it's a JPEG, so you can't really control anything. It's baked. So how? Let's say, what if I needed to trace uh, this text? How would I quickly do it in After Effects without leaving? to go to like Illustrator. So one way to do it is to select this JPEG and then go to uh, Layer and then Auto Trace. And inside here you have some options. So I'm going to do for time span just current frame. Uh, and in other words, it's a still, so I'm not worried about animation. So current frame is good for me. And then Options. So you have all these channels that you can play with. But since we have no alpha and all these other things, I'm going to do Luminance because Luminance deals with black and white. So this is perfect for me. And right away, you know, if you have preview checked, you can see that it's already outlined my uh, text nicely. 
And I mean, if you have some struggles, if you have some motion blur, you can play with stuff here and get what you need. So, but also you want to make sure that apply to new layer is checked uh, because once you hit OK, it's going to apply all the all this uh, tracing to a new layer. So I'm happy with with what I'm seeing here. I'm going to hit OK, and as you can see, create a new solid. If you hit M, you can see that all my masks are, are in here, and you can see that it's nicely traced my text. So that's pretty cool. But let me show you. Um, what to do if you're dealing with animation. So let's say I have this uh, simple, you know, I basically isolated this logo from my open. But what if, let's say, I wanted to trace this logo based on the alpha channel. So if I'm going to hit Alt-click on here, you can see that here's my alpha channel. But I wanted to trace this alpha channel. How would I do it? So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select uh, this uh, video clip and then go to Layer and then Auto Trace. And inside here, instead of uh, luminance, I'm going to do alpha channel. And instead of current, you know, time frame, I'm going to do work area. And uh, next, I think everything else looks pretty good. If you have blur, you know, adjust that accordingly. But I can see that it traced my uh, logo nicely. So it looks pretty clean. And I'm going to keep everything the same and hit OK. And it might take a couple minutes. And as you can see, it gave me a nice outline uh, with a new solid and everything. If you had M on your keyboard, you can see it's uh, pretty spot on. Number five is Alpha from Lightness, and it's also known as Unmolt. And so for this example, I'm, I'm just going to use this open again. And so I also have this Lumamat object buffer, and it basically isolates my uh, orange portion of my logo. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this Lumamat, and you can see it's just black and white. And so what Alpha from Lightness does, or Unmolt, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to type Unmolt in my effects presets here. And I'm going to apply that right on top of this Luma Mat. So you can see where it does. I'm going to solo this. It just basically gets rid of the black and keeps the white. And so now what you can do with it, I'm just going to select it and do Control Shift C to pre comp it. And I'm going to move all attributes into new composition. And I'm just going to name it uh, UM logo and uh, object buffer. And so now. Uh, what I can do is convert this into an adjustment layer. And I'm going to, maybe, I don't know, let's do hue and saturation. Just drop it right on top of this. And because I'm isolating this orange area, now if I change the hue, you can see that's only affecting my orange logo. Number six is extending a solid. So for this example, I'm going to bring a new solid into my composition. Control Y. We'll do that. And then next what I'll do, I'll lock this aspect ratio. And then I'll take the width down to 1280 by 720. Hit OK. And so, as you can see, my solid is not as big as my composition. So next, I'll select this rectangle tool, and I'll start drawing a mask right on top of my uh, solid. And as you can see, once I go past my solid, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't fill this gap, which is, you know, exactly what it needs to do. But what if, for some odd reason, I wanted to go past this solid? How would I fill this empty, transparent gap? So one way you can do it is by selecting the, the solid and then go to effects and presets and then just type fill. And next, just double click on it. And uh, it didn't really work because it just changed the color of my solid, but it still didn't do anything to the uh, empty areas here. So how would I fill these gaps? All you have to do is just make sure you select this checkbox for all masks. And as you can see, it will fill the gaps. Number seven is mask roundness. And so for this example, I'm going to select this footage here and I'm going to go and select my rounded rectangle tool and I'll draw a rounded rectangle right on top of my footage here. And as you can see, it does give me a rectangle with rounded edges. So, but how do I control the size of my roundness here? I can't really do it in my mask. So here's how you do it. All you have to do is make sure your footage is selected again and go here and make sure that's selected as well. And then if you click and drag your mouse, and don't let go of it like this. Uh, next, what you can do, if you push the left arrow key on your keyboard, it will make your edges sharp. But if you do the opposite, right arrow key, it will make it rounded. And so how do you control the roundness of your, um, of your corners? Because right now, it's pretty big. So all you have to do is just set the roundness the way you like. You know, scale it down like this. Maybe that's what I'm comfortable with. And then press right arrow key and it will actually set it as that. So that's cool. And you can move the mask while it's live by holding down space on your keyboard. And like so, that's good. But 
also the same thing applies for other shapes, you know, like star, if you click and drag and draw it. And if you do, you know, the left arrow, it will make it sharper and then right arrow will make it more round. So that's cool. And the same thing applies as well for polygon tool. So draw that and if you do uh, right arrow, it will make it rounder and so on. And the same thing applies for the shape layers as well. Number eight is orient along path. And so for this example, I have this shape layer just traveling along this path here. But what if I actually wanted this shape layer to orient along path? In other words, what if it would actually turn with the path instead of just being flat here, like a car would, you know? So how would I make that happen? All you have to do is just select this uh, shape layer and do Control alt o on your keyboard and then make sure orient along path is checked hit ok and now if i play it you can see that it orients along my path number nine is spatial interpolation so for this i have quick easy animation here and i don't know if you notice it but there's a quick back and forth animation happening right here but the thing is this keyframe and that keyframe are identical so there shouldn't be any animation between these uh these two keyframes but as you can see, we're seeing a little animation. So I don't know if you've ever had that happen to you, but it, it's pretty annoying. So here's how you fix it. So select your keyframes and do Control-Alt-K to bring up the keyframe interpolation. And where it says spatial interpolation, you can set it to linear and hit OK. And that will fix it for you. And I know a lot of people actually have that as, a, as their default. So to do that, just bring up the preferences, Control-Alt-Semicolon. And inside there, you'll see default spatial interpolation to linear in your general area. You can just check that and you'll never have that problem again. But there's also another way you can do it. If you hit Control-Z to undo that, so we still have that happening. So while your keyframes are selected, do Control-Alt-K, and then instead of linear, you can do auto Bezier. Hit OK. And now if you preview, you can see that that fixed it as well. Number 10 is Grow Bounds. And so for this example, I have this shape layer uh, that I'm using as a bar here. And as you might notice, it goes past my composition here. So that's important to point out because next what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply an effect called Bevel Alpha. And so I'm going to double click on it. And it's already there, but you can't see it. So let me crank this up a little bit and maybe the lightness so you can see it better. And here's a problem. It, you can see that applied around my bar here, but the problem is it stopped at the edges because ideally this would go all the way through this whole uh, shape layer. So in other words, if I move it to the right here, you can see that it does that here, but when I go left, it just stops at the edge of my composition. And so that can be a bit problematic. So how do you fix that? All you got to do is just type grow bounds and then double click on it and make sure to put that first. So grow bounds first. And now when you slide this to the right, it will fix that. And so here's another example. I'm going to bring up the logo, Ukraine Media logo, and it's a PNG. So I'm going to apply Radial Fast Blur. I'm going to double click on it. And I'm going to crank this up just so you can see it better. So right away you can see that this effect stops based on the you know edges of my PNG here. So how do I extend that? So the same thing. I'm just going to use Grow Bounds. I'm going to say Grow Bounds and then double click on it and then make sure to put it first. And now when you extend it, you can see that it extends the area as well. Number 11 is auto open panels. And so this one is a new feature of After Effects. It's a small feature, but it's quite useful. And it has to do with these tools up here. So if I were to click on the type tool here, notice that my panels have changed based on the tool that I have selected. So if I were to click on the brush tool, I have brushes and paint. And again, type tool, I have paragraph character. So that's kind of cool. And the way it does it, basically based on this auto open panels checkbox. So make sure you have it checked. And I think by default it is checked. And uh, you can also click on this button here to toggle between the two. Number 12 is unlock panel. And so if you want to unlock any of these panels in here, all you have to do, just hold down control on your keyboard and then click and drag on the panel you want to unlock. And as you can see, it's unlocked. And now you can do stuff with it. Once you're done, you can just click on it again, click and drag, and then put it anywhere you want. But I'm going to put it back here. And then I can move it up. Uh, to the, its position and stuff. Or you can also click on this area here and just say reset to save layout. Number 13 is text template for Premiere Pro. And I know I already have done a similar tutorial uh, on the subject, but After Effects did a few changes in this new release. So I kind of have to update you on this. And so, you know, if you want to export this composition into Premiere to where you can actually change the text inside the Premiere, uh, so how would you set this up now? 
And all you have to do, just make sure you select your composition here and then just go to composition and then export composition as text template and then navigate to a folder where you want to save this at. And I already have something here, so I'm just going to overwrite that. Yes. And so next we're going to go into Premiere Pro. All right, so here we are in Premiere and I'm going to open up our After Effects text template project. So I'm going to double click on it here. And then next I'll select my uh, composition and then I'm going to cl uh, double click on it just to make sure that's exactly what I want. Yep, that's it. And then I'm going to click and drag this into a new sequence. And here it is in a new sequence. So how do I change the text inside of it now? So I'm going to double click on this thing right here and then go to Effect Controls. And inside here you can see that I can change this text. So now if I change it to Sergey, you can see that it uh, changed it in my timeline as well. Number 14 is date and time tokens. And so for this example, I'm going to render this clip out. So I'm going to hit Control M on my keyboard. And you can see it sent my comp to this render queue. And so now in here where it says output to this down arrow, if you click on it and select this custom option, you can see here's my comp name, right? And then there's a file extension. And that's exactly what this template uh, does. But you can build up on that, and that's what tokens do. So I'm going to do underscore here, and you can add any of these properties in here. For example, I'm going to do frame rate. And so now I have comp name and frame rate, and then file extension, hit OK. And that's exactly what it'll give me here. And, you know, this has always been available, but now in After Effects, you can do date and time, which is very useful. So let's go back to the custom option here. So now I can do like underscore and maybe do, you know, like year, month, even minutes, seconds, and all that stuff. So that's very useful. And they have a quick preset that you can use. Just right here, comp name and then date uh, slash time. And so you can see here's my comp name, and then year, month, day, hour, and minute. So when I hit render, you'll see that my file will have all this useful information. So let's do that. So now if I go and find this file in here, you can see that my file, MOV file, has my comp name and then the year, month, day, and then the time. Number 15 is separate dimensions. And so for this example, I'm going to select this text in here and hit P on my keyboard to reveal the position property. And so how do I separate these two without using expressions? So all you have to do is just right click on this position here and separate dimensions. Make sure you check that and you can see X and Y are separate. And if you have a 3D layer, then you'll get the Z position as well. So that's cool. And if you wanted to undo that, just right click again and uncheck the separate dimensions and it'll go back to where it was. Number 16 is modify property by 10 times or 1 tenth default increments. And so in After Effects, a slider has three speeds. And so for example, if I click on the slider right now, that's the basic speed because by this point I'll get around 800. But if I hold down shift, I'll go 10 times the amount. So I'm going to hold shift and then click and drag. And around this point, I'm going to be around 3000. So that's holding down shift. Now what if I want to go 1 tenth? The amount so all you have to do is just hold down control and click and drag and you can see that it's barely moving so by this point i'm around not even around 600 and so the uh one tenth speed is pretty cool because you can be more precise so if i hold down control again i can literally control the decimal number so like five six seven eight so you can see how useful this can be and the last one is marker duration and so for this example i'm going to set a marker on my timeline here. So I'm just going to press down asterisk on my keyboard and here's my marker. But here's the thing. Now if you hold down alt on, on your keyboard and then hover over your marker here and click and drag, you can see that now you can extend the duration of your marker. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Make sure you watch all the other parts and, uh, you know, like the video, share it, subscribe to my YouTube channel and also follow me on Twitter and like me on Facebook. You know, I've received so many emails from you guys and also, you know, a lot of comments. And I've gotten to know so many of you. Uh, I got to develop so many great friendships. And it's been a blast. And I just really want to thank you guys for being so awesome. But anyway, until next time, my name is Sergei Proknevsky. And this is ukramedia.com. Ukramedia.com